The BMW i5 M60. This is currently top dog in the 5 Series lineup, this of course being a member of the G60 Generation 5 Series. This vehicle, which is not fully loaded and does not have cooled seats, comes at an eye-watering $93,000. And this is going to be the first of two i5 videos we do. This is going to be the standalone piece, and we'll be doing a comparison test video with its little brother, the i5 E40, against the Lucid Air Pure Rear Wheel Drive in an upcoming video. This is going to be more of a deep dive. Let's talk about the interior space and exterior. Starting with interior, this is essentially a direct identical clone of the regular 5 Series, and that's by design. When BMW developed this generation G60, the BEV variants and the ICE variants were done alongside one another, and they wanted them to feel essentially the same to a regular consumer. All you were picking is whether or not you wanted gas or EV. So from an interior perspective, it's essentially identical, albeit some software changes. So this is running iDrive 8.5, which means you have the single giant threaded screen, which depending on who you are, you either hate or love. It has all the mood modes, which are largely gimmicky, but that's how they do drive modes now. But the software itself is very good. It seldom crashes. Everything's fast to act and use. Yes, you tip tap your way through everything, but they did add some EV based charging gimmicks and fun. So if you're sitting in a charging station and you will be quite often, this M60 variant only gets like 230 miles of real world range. You can play games and use your phone as a, a controller. It's actually pretty well implemented and I'm glad it's there. It, it, it's trying to make the best of probably not the most entertaining situation. Now when it comes to the rest of the ergonomics of this car, it's exactly what you are expecting or hoping from in a luxury big executive German sedan. Great seats, very comfortable, good seating position, great door storage. Everything feels expensive. The thing that BMW does very well compared to most of its competition, particularly in this class of car, is build quality. No rattles, no squeaks. It's exceptionally quiet. The i5 is definitely quieter than the regular 5 Series. You can thank the giant battery pack in the center for all of its help in that department. The back seats are great. There are no ergonomic sacrifices, at least based upon what I can tell, versus the regular 5 Series. Big trunk. And from an exterior perspective, the styling, unless you are a BMW diehard, and yes, it's a polarizing looking car, it essentially looks the same, albeit some front bumper changes and rear bumper changes, but you have to really be paying attention to the grill and of course the lack of exhaust tips to really notice. Um, another thing I will talk about is audio system. The i5 M60 has the Bowers, at least to, to based upon how I'm reading the options as standard. This is not the diamond grade Bowers and Wilkins audio system and it's still really, really good. Combined with the quiet cabin, I think this is a worthy upgrade versus the base Harman system found in the regular 5 Series or i5. And here's some charts to show the differences. But with that, I think it's time for us to head in the shop and put this thing up in the lift. In the shop with the BMW i5 M60. This is one of three separate G60 Generation 5 Series videos we've done. So I'm going to do my best to summarize a lot of this and focus on what makes the M60 and the i5 so special. Now, from a package perspective, this is on the CLAR architecture, the latest iteration, which was co-developed with the internal combustion variants of the regular 5 Series. We've covered this already. Essentially, same product philosophy. They want their consumers to get into a regular 5 Series or an EV1 and not really be able to tell the difference. It has similar ride frequency and suspension tuning. Overall usability should be similar. All your sacrificing or giving up is whether you fill this up with fuel or you plug this into a wall and charge it. Now, from an electrical architecture perspective, front and rear of this is Klar. The center of it is the fifth generation of BMW's EV architecture, which means it's 400 volt, which technically is an antiquated system at this point. It does not have the charging speeds of, say, a Porsche, a Lucid, or one of the Kia Hyundai products. It's also technically less efficient using a lower voltage. BMW claims, however, that is no problem because the, the savings they're spending not using an 800 or 900 volt system and the fact that public charging never hits those rates anyway means their end consumers are only benefiting and not going to notice a real difference. The reality is, if you do get to a charger that hits peak speeds, which I will say is not all that common, this is a slower charging vehicle than its competition. The battery pack itself is an 81.2 kilowatt hour pack usable. It's like 85, 86 total size pack. 
It's made up of four modules that have 72 cells and three modules that have like 12 or 14. They do monitor the health of the pack. They do have a heat pump, which is a good thing. Now it comes to the electric motors themselves. The rear motor is 335 horsepower. The M60, of course, is all-wheel drive, which means it has a front motor that's mid-200s. Total system output is in the mid-500s. It's good for zero to 60 in like 3.7 seconds. It is currently, before the M5 comes out, the quickest 5 Series they currently sell. Now, suspension, it's still CLAR, which means it's multi-link front, multi-link rear. Everything's aluminum, everything's covered up. This does have the M Sport package as well, which means it has a higher ride frequency than, say, a base i5 or 5 Series. To negate the weight, again, this is supposed to feel largely similar to a regular 5 Series. There's a series of electromechanical systems. The shocks themselves are now stroke-dependent dampers versus the dampers that are found on the regular 5 Series. Essentially, the stroke-dependent dampers have better body control and better hydraulic control, which, again, trying to negate the, the cons of being a nearly 5,300-pound car in the case of the M60. Um, the VGRS rack is standard, which means variable gear ratio, faster steering, pair to rear steer in this M60 variant, again, helping the vehicle get in and out of corners, better turning radius, better initial turn in, better high speed stability. All these systems are working together to make this feel incredibly nimble for what it is. You have uh, torque vectoring by brake in the front and rear of this vehicle as well. In the back, the brakes along with the high speed motor control are trying to stimulate a traditional differential. This vehicle is not about going sideways, it's about just getting you out of corners relatively quickly. The i5 as well, in the M60 case has optional 48 volt sway bars. It's an interesting system and all of these mechanical systems work together to make the 5 or i5 as capable as it is. And it really is a very quick sports sedan. And when it comes to range, you're looking at an advertised range in the mid 200s. In the real world, you're looking at low 200s. So with that, let's go take this for a quick drive with Mark where we get to discuss the dynamics behind the BMW i5 M60. Mark, I've got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. Sport mode, boost mode. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's pretty good, Mark. But I think I need more cowbell. Oh, God. This is clearly very, very quick. We've driven the i5 e40 this is probably feels like twice the speed to 60. um yeah and it's a lot of money it's ninety five thousand dollars and it has a lot of the inherent pros and cons as we've already discussed of all the other five series of this generation but mark you know what else it has oh god it has some just incredible throttle calibration oh <laughs> it has some of the worst or least just smooth throttle calibration oh. of any oh. vehicle I've ever been in. <laughs> this is like uh, getting bent over and having a really bad sexual experience with somebody. The, it, the, they thought to themselves like, you know what, what do we need to do different? Well, let's screw up the, the throttle linearity. There's no smoothing on the throttle, at least in sport mode. The other modes are also not great. The brake pedal feels horribly unnatural the blended regen doesn't work all that well it feels it feels different every time you touch the brakes the steering is lifeless and dead you don't know what the car is doing and uh then they throw the gimmicks in like on launch control where the car shakes it, it, it like <laughs> tweaks the rear wheels so you're like bub, bub, bub. i mean this car is just a loaded full of like driving gimmicks yeah so what we need about the throttle calibration before we get like torched by our bmw reps is that it basically goes from 0% throttle uh, input to 100%. And, and then off throttle is like... Immediate regen, yeah. so then it jerks yeah. your head forward. No, there's no smoothing on the throttle. They, they, and then the map change, so if you're holding 15% throttle and you switch the, the maps, like the, not the maps, but the, the drive mode. The car slows down. The car speeds up or slows down. That's how much gain there is on the input of the throttle. So it's just, it's... Not good. And honestly. the steer and the brakes blend in region, and then sometimes they region more, mm -hmm. sometimes they region less. So it's very, very hard to be smooth with this car. However, I will say the chassis dynamics in typical BMW fashion, particularly with the rear steer in this thing, are 
really, it's, really it's way better than the i5 that we just drove, the regular i5. You know, it's it's way more connected feeling front to rear as it should be because this car had gained so much speed. Um, so you need more body control, and it, it does that. The, the the stability control, even though it's technically off, just like in the i5 E40, isn't really off. It's more about giving you a little bit of slip, a little bit of slip, and then using the electric motors and the, the TC modules and the brakes to pull you straight. This is not a car you're going to be hucking around like some of the other X drive or all wheel drive BMWs. Yeah. It's just a deeply capable, very, very quick car with really weird steering. It's not that it's not direct, it's that it's like a video game. Yeah, totally it's, lifeless. Yeah. Worse than the regular 530XI that we drove, but. Can't get, can't get a well, it, it does, but it's not like you have to really, really, really fight it to get it to go to lose the back end. And so, I mean, okay, there's there's two sides to this story with it. One is it's it, this is probably one of the worst examples of making a synthetic driving experience. Nothing really feels cohesive. Nothing feels like it's one to one with inputs. The inputs are all messed up. But because it's less twitchy than a typical internal combustion rear wheel drive BMW, it's way safer feeling. So if you get in this car and you don't have any driving aptitude, you don't, you've never done any aggressive driving, you feel like you could do anything in this car because it fools you into this, it lulls you into this false sense of security that the electronics do deliver on. You, you could go flying in this car very safely and the risk of you crashing it from turning the wheel is very, very low. Particularly for how much power this has. Yeah. It's one of the highest speed to safety ratios of experience in a vehicle like this. And I guess we're talking about primarily as a sports sedan at, yeah, at this right. point. And other than the speed and the safety element of it, I don't think it does a good job. But as a luxury sedan, there are some positive things. It rides pretty well. Yeah. The interior space is mostly really quiet. It, it's a nice place to be. And it's a good highway cruiser, assuming you can live with the range, which is in the real world like 240 miles and the some of the weirdness of the general this generation BMW I mean yeah. I really like the regular 5 series given all of its problems I do think that's a good car you spend a lot of time in the 530xi as much as I do yeah and other There's than no the compelling speed. reason to get this, I'll be honest, in this generation. I mean, yes, it is fast in a straight line, but it's excessively fast. Um, I, I don't see you really needing this, and most people that are getting a luxury sedan of this type, this is so overkill. The capabilities are overkill, but it's not a good, like, driver's feeling overkill type car. You know, it's got a lot of these first generation EV problems as they're messing around with calibration of everything to see what, what works and what doesn't. Um, for the price, again, what you're dealing with here, this is an excessive amount of money for what this is. Yep. Um, I think the initial experience of the regular 5 Series in this are similar, particularly just yeah. putting around. It's just once you start driving them hard, the regular 5 Series with internal combustion calibration of both the brake pedal and throttle are so much smoother and easier to engage yeah. with that just on that alone, it is a better driving car. 100%, and then you have the range thing with this. To get this extra performance, uh, it seems like you, you're, you're taking a hit in terms of overall usability and range. But Mark, you know what is not taking a hit? No, no, not again. I can combine this. My connection with BMW. With this. Start with the creation of the 18 BMW R car. With the <laughs> digital art mode, we have the chance to cooperate again and integrate. Take me to the future, Chow Fei. I think. It's Final thoughts on the i5 M60. Now, I'm going to be honest, this car is kind of a mixed bag. And when you're paying almost $100,000, it's probably not what you want to hear. Let's start with the good. It's a BMW, a modern BMW, which means the infotainment iDrive is great to use. It's very well put together. The interior space is exceptionally quiet. The seats are great. And for the class of car it is, it's packaged well. Big trunk, big interior space, great usability. The audio system, this Bowers & Wilkins non-diamond setup is excellent. And honestly, if you are not the most keen driver in the world and you just want something to putt in and out of traffic in, it's a 
reasonable EV. Its cons are, well, its range. This M60 gets 250 miles of range, which in today's market isn't great. The 400 volt architecture, well, I understand their argument for public charging that, you know, it's so bad that who cares it's not 800 volts isn't really the best uh, excuse, if I'm gonna be entirely honest. And the drivability, particularly throttle calibration and brake calibration is not great, particularly for a BMW. BMW has exceptional throttle calibration and brake calibration and inputs even in this modern era in most of their cars. In many ways, despite straight line acceleration and some of the refinement, the 530 Xi we drove earlier, I think is the better car. Is this thing extremely capable as an M60? Yes, between the rear steer, the suspension layout, you can do ridiculous things in this thing and be safe and be comfortable and all that other fun stuff. But to be fair, most modern EVs are really fast in a straight line and deeply capable. So it's a, not that compelling of a car at this price point. Personally, and as you're gonna see in an upcoming comparison test with the Lucid Air Pure rear wheel drive, I think the i5 E40 is a much more compelling offering. It's much cheaper, it has better range, you know, it, it's a more, I think, cohesive and compelling package, particularly for its price point. You can get that car in like the low 70s, high 70s, and at that point, you know, it's a real luxury EV with almost 300 miles of range. So with that, thanks for watching, hope to see you soon.